Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, we've, we've been on Psalm 14 and verse 1 and 2. David said, A fool have said in his heart that there is no God. And verse 2 tells us that God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there is any who understands, who seek God. Now I told you something on Monday. I said, as we go through this, you check your heart and you ask yourself the question, have I been a fool? And if, you've, if you realize that you've been a fool, you need to repent and ask God to forgive you and open your eyes and open your understanding. Praise God. Now then, thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you today. Your word is coming like fire and is dissolving every doubt, is dissolving every opposing sound or voice in the heart of everyone watching and listening right now. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, clarity and understanding comes to them now. And as I speak, they are hearing your voice in their hearts. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So, so we are in, in Psalm 14 and verse 1 and 2. So I said, a fool is the one who, who have said it in his heart. Now when he says say it in his heart, there's no God. There's no God. There's no God. No, not necessarily. His actions will tell. He doesn't want to seek God. So why don't you ask God his mind concerning? He said, oh boy, look, 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 we're wasting time. I mean, no, no, this is not the time to pray. Like I was telling you yesterday, it's time to act. Now you see this happen in, in marriages a lot. You see husband and wife, it, it gets to that point. And you know, that's why, the, like I was sharing with you last week, David said to Solomon, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. And we talked extensively on that last week. In a marriage relationship, or, or in a relationship, it, it just happens that you get to that point where you begin to feel that I'm the only one giving in this relationship. Now, you see, when it's a relationship that's supposed to lead to marriage and you don't, you don't get this sorted out, it's not best you, you get married to that person in the first place. You will have a lot of problems. But you see, if you're already married, it, this happens in marriages. And then either the wife or the husband begins to think that I've been the one giving the most in this marriage. I give love, I give affection, I give money, I give, you know, now especially, see, you, you know, sometimes I, 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 I talk to married couples and then I try to explain these things to them as much as I can. Listen, you can have a blissful marriage. I'm telling you the truth. See, not because challenges will not come. The problem in marriage are not the challenges that come. The problem in marriage is the solidness of your firmness or the firmness of your attitude or of your character to face those challenges. The challenges are never the problem, whatever the challenges. They are never the problem. The problem is always, are you solid enough in character to confront that challenge? You see, because whatever way, you will confront the challenge. If it breaks you, like the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, it's not because the devil is strong. It's not because the challenge was too great. It's because your strength was small. It's as simple as that. Your strength was small. No, 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 no. I did my best. Your best wasn't good enough. Because before that challenge came, you must have been given opportunity to grow your best. And that's how it works. So, so you find um, a spouse saying, now, especially in, in situations where, for example, maybe the wife 
um, has more money than the husband, physical money now. Or maybe she has a better job. Or sometimes she has a job, the man doesn't have a job. And then they've been married for like four years, three years, five years, ten years. And, and, and this man still, things are not working out for him, but things are working out for the wife. So she's the one paying the bills. She's the one paying the, you know, taking care of everything. Now, it gets to that part. The same thing can be the man also. A man can get to that point where he's thinking, my wife is not even bringing anything in this marriage. I'm the one paying all the fees, paying all the rent, paying all the, the bills. You know, she's just there eating my money. Men think like that too. <laughs> Praise God. And you begin to think and say, I wish my wife has something to be bringing in. Now, you think you're being rational in your thoughts, but you don't realize that something is polluting your heart. And if you don't take care of it, you will soon come down. Your finances will soon come down. Something is about to attack your finances or that thing that you think you have more is about to be attacked. And you're romancing with the devil. You see, he's romancing you. You know, like, like when, when uh, uh, a python wants to swallow its, um, its um, prey, it will first of all use the saliva, you know, to rub the body, to make it slimy. So he can swallow. So that's what the devil is doing to you. He's, he's, he's you know, arranging you, arranging you before he hits you. So you're there imagining those thoughts. And like, can you imagine? Well, what significant thing has my wife done since we got married for me? Nothing. House rent me. Students go fees me. All the bills. Even, even to buy disposable dispenser water that they sell 500 naira. It's still no. I, I remember the other day she called me that, that, uh, that water is finished. I mean, water. You know, you, you sit down and you're thinking all those thoughts in your mind. And you think you're being rational. And then after thinking those things, I say, I think my wife and I need to have a talk. And he go, honey, we need to talk. So what is it? I'm tired of being the one doing everything in this house. You need to do something. So what do you want me to do? Should I go get a job? And hey, maybe, maybe you should get a job. Maybe the wife isn't working. And hey, maybe you should get a job. Okay, so. Okay, what, what do we do? Go look for a job. Goes to look for a job. She starts working. The next thing, her job becomes a problem. I don't like the fact that you're coming. Eh, eh, oh, eh, why can't you leave your job and come and do other things? How can she leave her job? Eh, you should know that before that job, I'm your husband and I'm your authority in your life. You, you see, you see, when Satan was setting you up for this, you didn't see it. You thought you were being rational in your thinking. You don't realize that you were acting as a fool. I'm telling you the truth. You see, why do I say you were acting as a fool? When those thoughts were coming to your mind, you didn't turn to the Lord to seek understanding. So you chose the path of a fool. Now, no. let me show you scripture. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we read Psalm 14 and verse 2. Let me show you something in Proverbs chapter 18. Look at verse 2. Proverbs 18 and verse 2. It says, A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Did you see that? A fool has no delight in on. He doesn't pay attention to trying to... We are, we are trying. See, brother, you need to understand. Please, 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 please. I, I'm, I'm not ready to understand anything. Right now, I just want to do what is in my mind. <laughs> you think... See, look at your definition here. 
Look at your Bible so you don't think I, you know, this one he was just, he just said we should open Proverbs. Maybe he's just reading his mind. Open your own Bible, Proverbs 18 and verse 2. It says, a fool has no delight in understanding. So when you're trying to talk to him to make him see reason, he doesn't want to listen. Why? I have made up my mind. That's what he says. But in expressing his own heart. What's in his own heart? Nonsense. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so you got to that point where the devil was giving you thoughts, polluting your heart. You didn't take charge of your heart. And then you, you fell for it. And you took a decision from that place of pollution. You took a decision that set your wife or your family on a new course. And you may not see it the first month, the second month. You may begin to see it after one year, after two years. By that time, your wife have gotten used to that new life. And, and now you're trying to readjust and it's difficult. And many marriages, the crack came in from there and they don't know how to escape it anymore. And they just start living their life trying to patch up, trying to patch up. And this one starts doing his own thing. This one starts doing her own thing. And this one saying, yeah, that's what happens. And both of them are still not willing to come before the Lord to understand. And then they crash. So what do you do? When those thoughts begin to come, I'm the one doing, maybe you're even the wife doing those, yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, you know, sometimes it can start from someone's word. I mean, you can just be, you know, say, ah, has your husband gotten a job yet? Oh, no, we're still working at it. So you're the only one handling everything right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Sister, you have to be wise. So. Say, ah, I know what I'm doing. Right? And then the person goes, and then you sit down. And then that voice begins to re-echo. You have to be wise. You have to be wise. What do you do? First of all, you ask yourself the question. Am I the one providing for everything? Or is it... See, first of all, you need to ask yourself, am I the one providing for all these things? Or is it God that I've been providing for all these things. I said, but I'm the one working, I'm the one doing the job, I'm the one getting the money, and the one money is coming. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You see, you are breaking the first principle of blessing from the Lord. And what is the first principle of blessing? Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives you power to get wealth. That's what he says. Now, you are breaking that already. When you are thinking in your heart that hey, I'm the one walking, I'm the one, I'm the one doing everything. Hey, it, it tells me that you don't even tithe. See? Because that's what you do when you tithe. You acknowledge him as God. So when he says you shall remember the Lord your God, what's he saying? Like, oh, Father, I remember you. No, 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 no. That's why you know, I told when I talk about tithing, I say, you see, it's honor. It's honor. So, so when you receive your pay, the first thing you remember is God. He said, Father, whoa, I thank you. You gave me strength this month and I want to honor you with this. And then when you honor God with that, now you see, it looks small. But you see, the practice of honor will bring your mind to the place of understanding that it is not by power, it is not by might. And because when you are consistent in honoring God, you will begin to enjoy certain favors. So you will never get to that place where you are thinking, it is by my strength that I've been making money. You won't get there. And if Satan tries to bring it up, I'll tell you the truth, by the next time you receive money and you want to honor God, you will shut that down. Now, so it, it starts from there. You don't honor God in the first place. Now, Satan has attacked you. And then you're falling for his attack. And you don't know what to do. But you are supposed to, at that point, say, it's not me. It is God. You now began, begin to think and ask yourself, hey, has there been any time that we needed money and, and there was no money to pay? Despite the fact that my wife is not working, despite the fact that my husband is not working, somehow we've paid all our bills. Somehow, 
it is God. Father, I bless you. Thank you. Because you're doing and, and so now when you talk to people like say, so for how long am I going to do it? Hey, remember what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> You know, marriage and relationship comes with great understanding. If you want to succeed, we will continue tomorrow because my time is up. I bless God for today. Listen, go out and find pasture today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye-bye.